Looks like we have a good number now, Cassidy, in case you want to get us started. All righty. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cassidy Dews. I am a financial center manager for Bank of America. I'm actually located in Waxahachie, Texas. Um, a new branch has just opened on Monday. I've been doing uh, banking for 11 years. Um, so I'm very excited to be here and help you guys with getting started with investment. I'll allow my um, partner who will do the second part of the presentation to introduce himself. Hey, hey guys, I'm uh, Theodore Hansen or Ted or Theo or any derivative thereof. Um, I'm in uh, operations. So I'm a senior vice president group operations manager, um, which essentially means I fix stuff and manage people and manage processes. I'm uh, working out of the Addison office consequently live in Waxahachie, so it's a nice commute for me every day, but that's a little bit about me. I've been with the bank um, since 2012, so a little bit now. All righty, so I will go ahead and get us started. Let me pull the slides up for you guys. All right, so we're going to talk about investments, getting started. I'm going to do at least three of the first slides and then Ted will come in and he'll just wrap us up and then we'll do our Q&A at the very end. So first off, why invest? A lot of times people are very comfortable with just coming inside of the location. They don't want to really do anything much with investments um, because they're just more comfortable with, look, I need an account just to either receive my checks or to be able to have a debit card and just use it for daily uses. Um, we we wanna talk about today is how investing can actually help you reach some of your future goals in two different ways. Um, first, potentially, it's gonna help you generate income with certain type of investments. So there are, of course, different rates, just like they are for savings accounts, um, CDs, IRAs, things of that nature. There are different types. So what you do is you just see what, how aggressively do you want to save? And then you just kind of go from there to see which investment type is going to best fit, what you can afford to put in there. Also, how your return will be um, in the future. Or, of course, you can increase in value over the long term. We do have some clients that are like, look, I just want to put money in there and I just want it to grow. I don't want to touch it. Just want to see it grow. And, and if products come that are better than that, I'll switch it later. But I, I don't want to have to go back and forth with it. I just need something that's going to allow me to grow some extra income. So the example that we have on this slide is just about a $10,000 initial investment. One is more of your five years and one is your 20 years, which you would see. First, of course, that's your regular checking account, that cash on hand. That's what you will see. 10,000, there's nothing that's gonna grow from that. There's, unless you have an interest-bearing checking account, but of course, just cash on hand or a regular checking account, you're just gonna stay with what you put in it. Then of course, you have your savings account. If you have a 1% interest, you'll gain in five years, $512. Um, just looking at the rates that they are now, that is definitely how much savings accounts are giving you, just bare minimum savings account. So that's definitely in five years, you just kind of only gain very little. But if you actually look into investing, of course, depending on the investment type, um, you could uh, get about 7% or more. Of course, that just varies with what you're looking at. But let's just say for an example, if it's a 7% interest, you're gonna get obviously a lot more than you would with cash on hand and just a 1% interest on your savings. And then we look down at the 20 years, and of course it's more time, but with that 1% interest on your online savings, you kind of only went up about $2,213 versus the 20 year investing, which was about $30,387. $30, so you really wanna take a look at what are you trying to do and how aggressive and fast do you wanna get there? 
because of course that's going to determine how much you have to put in there um, not only every month but just an, your initial deposit so of course all investments they're going to they're going to carry some type of risk anytime anything goes up then of course you see the stock market goes up and you're making some money but when it goes down you'll definitely it will go down for sure um, at any time. I know a lot of times when we have presidential debates, well, presidential elections, I'm sorry, um, sometimes you do tend to see the stock market go up and down because they're not really sure what's going to happen after the presidency election. So those are times um, as well as tremendous um, worldwide things such as COVID or when we had the Great Recession or when we did have a, a small war in 2001. You will see things like that, which are reasons why it goes up and down. Um, but of course, you want to check it every month. You also want to know what happened, you know, if this event happens, just to make sure that you're investing into the right product. Because some products, they're like, hey, no matter what goes on, you're still going to have this um, to kind of go off of, while others will kind of depend on what the market is currently doing. Um, we do want to make sure you look at the timing of the market. If it's low at that time, it may not be a good chance um, to go ahead and go in there and get started. Um, we like to call it the hot stock, where, hey, Apple is coming out with some new product and they know everyone's going to get it. So you quickly try to get some stock in it because you want to go up. But then sometimes it doesn't benefit you in the long run. Um, so those are things that you kind of want to look at. Um, but you want to try to capitalize on the short-term changes in the stock market. Um, also, things that require time when you market, when you go in and out, um, that could cost you like tremendous hurt at the end. Um, of course, you may see a company that looks like they're doing pretty good now, but then sometimes it, it pays to do your homework because if one thing is popular now, let's say it's a, a talking teddy bear, for example, and you say, hey, I want to get into that. How long do you think that teddy bear is going to be popular before it possibly goes down with no business, which will actually hurt you in the long run? So you definitely want to kind of look because the stock market kind of goes up and down. Um, and then, of, of course, the example that we have here, you know, it goes from fully invested at about 9.8 and all the way down to about miss the best in about 30 days, which is a 4.0. So you definitely want to just kind of look and see how the stock market is, what you're going to try to invest in, how have they been doing? Don't just look at how they are now. You want to look at how have they done from for five the last five years, or are they, you know, being able to withstand any test of times with just this year or just last year? You just kind of want to do your research and just make sure you do your due diligence and asking all the questions. There are never too many questions that you can ask just to make sure that you're getting yourself in the right product. Um, our next section is what could I invest in? And that's where Ted will be taking over from here. Yep, thanks Cassidy. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna start off with a quote from Albert, Albert Einstein, because he might be a little smarter than I. Um, he said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world he who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. So when you're thinking about investment overall, you're paying your credit card payment, you're paying the credit card company compound interest. If you put your money in an investment vehicle, you're earning compound interest. So that's just one way to, I think, conceptualize it. Um, if you want to move to the next slide on six, um, I'll talk about setting your goals, your time horizon, um, liquidity, all that stuff and what goes into it. <clears throat> so think of your time horizon as how long you'll need your investments um, to grow, when you'll be needing to access those investments, um, such as a retirement, um, how long you'll have to have your money sit in the market, how much of that money should be um, you know, in the stocks, how much of that should be um, in other more um, less risky um, options. So you think about it, and it breaks it down here. 
we got a few different options. And this doesn't represent all options. Everybody's situation scenario is going to be unique. Um, and talking to a financial advisor will really help kind of nail that down. Um, you know, 10 plus years, you got more than a decade before you're going to need to start using your money. Um, you've got time to write out, you know, the increases and the decreases. And like Cassidy said, not make um, emotional quick reaction decisions to pull money out. Um, you can see that in the, the time overall value of the stock market. Um, it's increased over the last 100 years overall. So you got more time, you got more than 10 years, you've got time to, to take a little more risk on, um, not have to worry about, um, you know, slow dips in the economy, it allows you to be a little bit more um, aggressive in potential uh, income you'll earn. Five to 10 years, um, you probably want to start looking at maybe diversifying that a little bit. If you've got everything in the market and stocks, Diversifying that into bonds, um, things more more stable, less risky. So you're not overly exposed, knowing you're going to need to access that money in five to ten years. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you've got a good spread of investments. Um, one to five years, you're going to need the money soon. You probably can't afford any market volatility or very little. So you're going to want to park your money. Um, somewhere where it's safe, you know, uh, treasury bonds, things like that have a excellent um, track record of being safe um, and being stable. Um, the return isn't as great, and that's kind of the risk reward, um, but your money is stable, it's safe. So I think to look at this, ask yourself, when do I want to retire? And that is your answer as far as when you fit on that time horizon. The process of thinking about that, you, you're building a plan. You're actually putting thought and effort into it. A financial advisor can help you walk through those decisions. But putting a plan together, I think, is the most important part. Um, like Cassidy said, you know, put your money somewhere and just let it sit. You need to think about when do I need to access mo this money? And that will certainly inform you on like what investment options you want, how risky you can be, where your money needs to go. Um, things like that. If you want to go to the next slide, talk about risk tolerance, kind of in line with what I was just talking about. Um, having a plan, putting some thought, some effort into how much risk you're willing to take and not have stress, be able to sleep at night, as it says here, um, that's your risk tolerance. Your risk tolerance will change um, the older you get. Like I said, the closer to retirement you get. Um, my risk tolerance when my daughter was born was <laughs> probably wide open, right? Um, now it's it's different. You know, start paying for college soon, um, things like that. So risk tolerance kind of changes, just like everything else when you get older. When you're getting close to retirement or you're within that one to five year range, it's really going to change how you want to invest your money because you want to make sure what you've earned over the last 10, 20, 30 years um, is going to be there. So think about that as your risk tolerance. How you establish that is thoughtful um, goal setting. Like you have to Put an effort into planning your, your, your scenario, when you want to retire, how long you have to put the money in the market. And again, a financial advisor will really help you hash out those goals. And that person will, the finance, he or her will ask you questions like everything I've gone over. Um, when do you want to retire? How many people in your family? How, how many, are you the, the one who's got to pay the bills? What your exposure is? Um, if you need to or want to leave money for um, children, grandchildren, they'll walk you through all that. And those things, those decisions, how you want to manage your money, that will inform uh, the financial advisor and it should inform you on where you want to put the money, what your risk tolerance is with the time that you have. If you want to go to the next slide, I kind of alluded to this a little bit talking about 
where you put your money. Um, an aggressive portfolio, like I was saying before my daughter was born, when I was young, I had an aggressive portfolio. I just wanted growth. And if that came with some dips in the economy, that's okay. Over time, it's, it's going to be an overall increase in my money. Your, your portfolio being aggressive makes more sense when you're, when you're younger. Um, and again, that scenario is going to be different for everybody. If you have kids, if you don't have kids, etc. cetera. Um, if you've got college to save for, things like that. Moderate portfolio, I think this is about where I'm at now, mid-40s, right? I'm still needing to grow money because I'm not retiring, sadly, uh, anytime soon. Um, but I'm also aware that I can't afford to lose a bunch of money either. So you see how these are diversified by uh, the share of the donut, so to speak. So you start out with almost everything, 88% in stocks, maybe 10% in bonds, and you have some in, in cash or money markets, um, stuff that you know Cassidy helps set up at the financial center. You know How much do you, you need in terms of liquidity? If you put everything in the market, you're not gonna be able to access it that day when you want it. You might have to sell stuff off, wait for it to sell. So having cash on hand is an important part of this equation, part, uh, an important component of your, your risk tolerance. You're looking at moderate portfolio, you've got 59, almost 60% of your money still in stock, but you've also got a good chunk, 39, 40% in bonds. Uh, again, bonds are stable, they're safe, um, but they're not, they're not likely to, to make you a lot of money. You'll see a relationship between stocks and bonds. When stocks are up, bonds are down. When stocks are down, bonds are up. They call that like the flight to quality, the flight to safety. Stocks aren't doing well uh, to tend to put their money in bonds. And that affects the, the interest rate, the yields on treasury bonds and all, all that type of stuff. So there's a push and pull between these two. And they're not quick decisions based on the market conditions, but they're decisions based on the plan that you've created with your financial advisor, how you want to, to manage your money um, in terms of where you are in your life, how much time you have to let it grow. You get closer to retirement, um, you know that age or that date, you're thinking one to five years, you can see your, your portfolio gets conservative. You've got most of the majority of your money is stock, uh, loaded into bonds, um, you got 25, 26%, a quarter of it in stocks, and you're retaining more cash on hand, more liquid liquidity. Um, you might need that money. You, you know it's safe, it's cash, it's yours. FDIC, federally insured, um, that makes more sense to retain some of that at that age. And then if you go to slide nine, so this has to do with something Cassidy mentioned in the beginning. You don't want to stick your money somewhere and forget about it because over time, your needs will change, your goals will change, your situation will change. Having one kid, two kids, having another kid, um, they will, they won't go to college. Um, things like that, they, they change throughout the course of your life and the market changes always. So having goal setting, the routine in place to make sure that you're checking your investments, checking your portfolio, I think best practice once a year, that's going to help make sure that you're informed. It also makes sure that you're constantly asking yourself those questions to develop your plan, to update your plan. Your goals change, not based just based on your age and when you're going to retire, but based on scenarios in your life. Things you know, aren't different this year. They're different this year than they were five years ago in your life and in the market. So having that routine to check on your investments, make sure everything is still allocated how you want um, is a best practice. Make sure that we're, we're, we're actively reviewing this information. I think that brings us best practices. Slide 10. And I believe that opens us up for Q&A, if I'm not mistaken.
And yes, it does open us up for Q and A. A whole bunch right. of information. There's got to be questions out there. So far, we only have one question, and that was just asking about um, some of the data that was on the first couple of slides and why it wasn't showing data from 2024. 2024 isn't out yet as far as an annual. Um, it's a good call out. We could certainly have the first two quarters on there of 2024. All right, if there are any other questions, let me, since y'all are done talking, I can also open up the chat. So if you're not sure how to submit through the Q&A section, um, the chat is open if you prefer to submit your questions through the chat. Okay, looks like we have another Q&A section. I would like to know how to research different stocks and then based on what, what do you, I'm if not sure about already, the second part. But. Uh -huh. If you've already got um, a Bank of America account, um, there is an amazing app called Merrill Edge. It's super interactive, it's very easy. Um, to use, and you can look up the everything you want about a stock on your own. It's self-guided. You can go in there and you can check a check the the stock. You can search for the what their call sign is, what their stock industry name is, and it will show you that company's performance over a period of time. Period of time that you select. It'll show you basic information on the company, and you can actually access market. Um, articles, what market experts have written about that company and their future outlook, their performance, etc. So once you get your money, even you know if it's not with Bank of America, no matter where it is, other um, investment fiduciary firms are going to have that information. They're going to have apps and tools that, that allow you that insight. And the library also has a resource called Value Line where you can also uh, research stocks and trade information as well. So if you have a library card with the city of Plano, that is another resource um, that you can get access to. That's a great starting point, yeah. Uh, let's see our next question. Uh, are you able to give recommendations for stocks and bonds? Yeah, absolutely. If you're speaking with um, an advisor, they're going to certainly go over every ounce of that, every inch of that, all your investments, where they go. Um, after going over some of those those questions to make sure that they're setting the right goals, the right time horizon, where you're at when you want to retire, that's going to you know help build your your plan. But you can certainly bounce that question off of anybody. Okay. I don't know if that answered the question. Let me know if that didn't answer the question, if you had something more specific in mind. Um, okay. So somebody has a question about possibly um, something you were mentioning other uh, earlier, excuse me. Um, what about novices? Terms like PE and other terms that we might not understand. Well, that's the best part. <laughs> the The internet, you can look that stuff up and learn it a number of different ways. And that's without investing a cent. You can educate yourself. Um, there are a ton of scholarly and market um, like articles and um, resources online and, and in paper that you can delve into to get that information. But if you're talking about like puts, Days, calls, um, all of that information, just kind of searching or Googling that, um, those acronyms, it'll be the first thing that pops up. I'll make an admission here. Sometimes I have to do that when I get our quarterly earnings report. 
And okay, what's that mean again? I have to, I forgot it. So what's this acronym alphabet suit mean? So that's what I do, I just do my research. All that information should be readily available. And kind of getting a good vocabulary of that stuff and, and putting some time in to, to, to look for it and shoot, write it down, whatever you got to do to retain it. But that makes all this seem a lot less daunting. Yeah, it's like putting yourself through another type of schooling, right? Like homeschooling yourself. <laughs> yeah. Outline that on a piece of paper and search up the, the terminology and, and write it down. That act will help you remember. Okay, our next question. How should you handle employee stock plan if you're leaving the company? Oh boy, that's a very specific question. So if you know where you're going and you know, a financial advisor are probably better able to answer this, but if you know where you're going, you know what their plans are, assuming you're leaving this job, going to another job, um, kind of look at what the options are and whoever you have your money with now will have some options for rollover and places where you would put your money next, they will have options for rolling money over um, the tax benefits of where you roll that over, you should probably include the C your CPA, your tax professional in some of those discussions. Um, but a financial advisor will know your, your goals and be able to make sure that we're putting that money in the right place to lessen your exposure. Is it an IRA? Is it a Roth IRA where you don't, or where you pay your, your taxes before you put the money in so that when you take it out, you don't have to pay any taxes? Um, or a standard you know, 401k IRA where you take pay your taxes on that money when you take it out. Kind of where you're at in, in your life, your risk tolerances, all of that will help kind of define those things for you and, and what are your best vehicles. But where you're taking your money out and where you're moving your money to, call those places and, and they'll have a, a litany of options for you. Make sure that you're you're forming a plan for that because that that's a big one for sure. Okay, next question. I invested through Robinhood and I'm still learning the ins and outs. Is that a good platform or are the banks the better route? Well, I'm always going to say <laughs> Bank of America is better mainly because of Merrill Lynch. Um, and the tools, like I kind of went over the Merrill Edge, that platform that you have. Um, I'm not really familiar with Robinhood to give you an answer one way or the other. Um, but if you're a novice and you're taking part in it, you're participating, you're doing the research, I think that's probably more important than which resource you're using. You know, you're going to learn a ton from that. Um, like I said, that Merrill Lynch has got some really awesome tools. Um, if you look look up their performance, their industry leading, um, I know we do a really good job overall. But depending on you know the amount of money you have, the amount of money you have to invest, those plat some of those platforms like Robinhood are great because it gives you full control and you don't need a certain amount of money to to start with financial planning. But I don't know much about Robinhood specifically. All right, thank you. Next question. Merrill, Merrill has all my money. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Um, okay, other than Yahoo Finance, can you let us know of a website that we can refer to for technical and fundamental analysis of stocks? Uh, Harvard Business Review. <clears throat> Harvard has a free publication um, that, that they publish, produce, um, you can Google it, go online, and find that information. The Harvard Business Review, they write articles on a host of information, financial, um, leadership. It's obviously reputable. It's Harvard. Um, but they've got a really good amount of quick synopsis, short articles that are easy to digest, um, but they're reputable and they have great information. I think that's a great resource and one that I use.
I know Value Line also provides information on that, and I believe Investors Business Daily does as well. Um, some of those do incur a cost. Um, I'm not sure about the Harvard one that you just talked about, Theo, but it just kind of depends on the resource. Okay, yeah, I think next. Harvard's been free for me. Awesome. Okay, so if you have an account in Bank of America, can you immediately access Merrill, the Merrill Lynch resource you're talking about? Yeah, if you search Merrill Edge in the App Store, um, you should have that option uh, to be able to install it. The money you have with Bank of America, um, it will link. Um, I can transfer money back and forth from my checking account with um, with Cassidy to my Merrill Edge account. I can trade stocks right there. I want to transfer money from my paycheck, um, from my checking account over to my investment account. You'll have a cash account that you can then use to invest in stocks, bonds, etc. Okay. See, I just added the three resources that we mentioned, Merrill Edge, Value Line, Investors Business Daily, into the chat for a request we just had. I don't see any other questions. So if you're thinking of any other questions, please go ahead and submit those. Okay, it looks like that might be all of our questions for today. Good questions. Cassie and Theo, did y'all have anything else you were going to share with us today? No. That was, that was the only thing, just the presentation. Okay, perfect. I just didn't want to cut you off if you needed to share your screen again. Um, if While we're waiting to see if there are any other questions on the investing side of things, I'm going to share my screen um, to put up some resources about the library. And if you're thinking of any other questions, please feel free to go ahead and share those. All right, can you all see my screen? Make sure I'm on the right slide here. I think I started a little too far down. Should be talking about financial literacy classes. Is that up on the screen? Cassidy, are you able to see that? Sorry, I took away your faces. I can't see your faces anymore. <laughs> it's on there. Yes, okay. It's on there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Took over my whole screen. Okay, so library resources that we have for you that are related to financial literacy. We part. We also partner with the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, we we have classes on building wealth and navigating your future. For your young ones, we have classes called Art Shop, where you bring the kiddos in and they get to learn about um, spending a little purse of money on things that they want to make them aware of purchasing. Uh, we have Money As You Grow and helps to guide parents as they're growing with their families. We also have resources that you can access through the library, such as the New York Times, Harvard Business Review, Wall Street Journal, and the Dallas Morning News. We have 125 plus magazines, including Consumer Reports, Bloomberg Business, Forbes, and Fortune. And then we've got investment, investment analysis information, such as Morningstar and then Value Line, which I had mentioned earlier. If you are interested in any career type programming or computer skills, 
Um, we teach basic computer skill classes. We have access with your library card to LinkedIn Learning that has 8,000 plus courses and certifications on it. And we also have job um, research, resource classes and resume building. We also provide business classes for those interested in entrepreneurship. And if you're trying to start or have your own small business, we have a community group that meets, meets monthly and we partner with Dallas SCORE and they do a mentorship for anybody who wants to start your business or currently has one and you're just needing a little bit of help and direction. We also provide access to technology tools such as uh, Canva, the Adobe Suite, tools for podcasting, if that might be part of your business or maybe even a hobby. And we have access to Reference Solutions, which is a business and marketing research database. And then the next two slides that I have here for you um, are a list of our upcoming programs. You can also find these through our planolibrary.org website on our calendar and online brochure. If anything shown here is virtual like this class, you will need to um, register online to get a Zoom link. But we have lots of stuff upcoming for the fall session and you can find the full brochure through our website. And if you have any questions about today's class, you can contact our library outreach at plano.gov email. And then right there on the screen, you should also see our library website and our library blog, which is that Plano Library Learns .org. There's a lot of extra information through there as well, both for financial, business, career, and family programming. And it looks like we have a few other questions. So I am going to stop the share right now so that I can make sure you can, I can answer any of the other questions that you might have. Okay. Oh, it looks like it was about the slides. So I hope everybody was able to see those slides. Uh, they were stuck at the beginning, but I think they were changing as I was going. Um, I will put the link for the library website on here just in case you did not see that one. And then if there are any last questions, please feel free to submit those now. All right, link to the Plano Library website is in the chat now, and that's how you can access any of the resources that I shared with you. All right, it does not look like we have any other questions. So thank you all for joining us today. And if you do think of questions later, you can submit them to the email. Cassidy and Theo, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise on investing.